Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, as everybody knows, we had a very shortened uh, holiday weekend, well week, uh, Turkey Day. Hope everybody had uh, an amazing uh, Thanksgiving. Again, it's all about uh, hanging out, spending time, family, friends, loved ones, uh, anybody who is important uh, in your life. As always, I want to thank everybody uh, for their continued support of this channel. If you haven't done so already, please uh, click a like, and if you haven't done so already as well, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can continuously uh, get uh, notifications when we are uploaded. So hopefully everybody is doing great. Great start to uh, the, the weekend, the great start uh, to the holiday um, festivities, and the most important part is where we are as far as the market goes. And if you guys remember last year, uh, going towards the end of the year, um, traditionally, right, this is a traditional Kind of statement traditionally uh this type of year this time of year for the equity markets is usually very very good again we have this whole thanksgiving rally going into the santa claus rally and going to the january effect and traditionally and that's the air quotes traditionally uh the market has done very very well at this time of year but if you guys remember last year the word tradition doesn't mean it has to be and last year uh, we had a pretty, you know, negative end towards the year with equity prices, and you know, pretty much throughout this year, I would say, you know, eight nine months of, of this year has been sell side buys. It's been kind of obvious, uh, with pockets of strength uh, temporarily reclaiming back the 50-day moving average and going on, you know, pretty decent uh, tradable rallies uh, for the short term. And you can see this uh, several times throughout the year. Let me just kind of make this smaller. You saw this little small rally here above the 50-day, only to give it up. You had this another pretty decent rally here. Uh, where's the last one? Uh, last one was right here. Last one, the second to last one was right here. We reclaimed the 50 day, had a month and a half run. And now we are here, uh, now we are here for you know about a month, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? So you're talking about uh, you know two, two weeks and change above the 50 day moving average. And we are building, right? We are building to go higher. And if you guys watched, uh, the video uh, on Tuesday, right? Wednesday there was no video. Uh, Thursday was obviously uh, Thursday was obviously Thanksgiving, so we were off. So this is, I think, the second, third video of the week. But if you guys remember the video on Tuesday, we talked about the importance of all the major indexes getting above the five-day and slash ten-day moving average because it kind of ended the distribution, right? We had a ten percent run on CPI. It came in three, four, five days. And then on Tuesday, we finally reclaimed the, the, the five-day moving average. And then on Wednesday, we had that really good follow-through. And that, we could see that on all the indexes. We talked about the Qs. We talked about the SPIs, right? The SPIs reclaimed this whole channel here, had this really nice uh, three-day run. Uh, if you look at the IWM, kind of the same thing, right? The IWM uh, is building above this five-day moving average three days in a row. And last but not least is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, who's just been in its own world. And keep again, keep this in mind. Uh, you know, the data for the Dow Jones is a little bit skewed because again, there's only 30 stocks, and all it takes is one stock to be strong, like really one stock to be strong, and everything else can kind of go flatline. And you saw that with Boeing, right? Boeing. Uh, and again, this is just one of them, but Boeing had a really nice uh, move outside of this consolidation channel. And again, nice really pivot, uh, probably the only pivot uh, in the room on Friday, on, yeah, on Friday. Uh, and now it's kind of looking at all time highs. Again, we'll get to individual, some, some individual names I'm kind of watching uh, for Monday's session. But the most important part is exactly what happens next. So let's kind of revere back to uh, revert back to the cues. So we see here, and this is all baby steps. And this is kind of the whole point of technical analysis. Everything is a piece of the puzzle, right? There's no predicting, there's no guessing. Uh, when somebody asked me, hey Dan, what do you think about the market going to next year? I couldn't tell you, right? We're just trying to prepare for the next day, right? So if the next day's uh, technicals confirm the previous day's channel, we know that's a good. We know our research is building upon the previous day. You know, if the next day's research fails our research and starts taking out multiple days of bottom channels, then we know, hey, wait a minute, there's something wrong. We have to kind of revert back to the sell side bias, maybe not for, for all time lows, but kind of as a tradable move. And that's exactly what we saw here 
uh, going back the last couple of weeks. All we did was you know, take advantage of the bottom channels. And you can see here how cool technical analysis is. Nothing is random, right? Stocks usually stop at areas of a reflection point of interest. And that's exactly what happened here. On the move, on the move up, uh, the queue stopped into daily supply. On the move down, they held it three times, right? They held three times uh, on this channel here to kind of finally save it and kind of start reclaiming channels back. So going into next week, we have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. I think uh, everybody uh, can agree to that. The last couple of days, we saw really, really big moves uh, in all the major uh, tech players, or at least the majority of them. Uh, now that we're kind of going, you know, going a little bit sideways, especially Friday session, it was you know pretty much expected. I would say ninety, you know, ninety-five percent of all the people uh, that I know. Uh, did not trade on Friday. And then you kind of you pretty much saw the action outside of Boeing. You pretty much saw the action of everything else. Everything else literally uh, went sideways, right? If you could go through a whole bunch of charts and you see the 60 minute view on a whole bunch of charts, here's the chart of the, you know, the spies went, went sideways. Here's a chart of, of Amazon, right? Went sideways. Here's a chart of Microsoft, right? Went sideways, you know, and so forth and so on. NVIDIA that had a a great two-day run kind of went sideways. So uh, it's very, very tough to make a determination. Something materialistically has changed uh, from Friday's session based on the last uh, couple of days of rallying uh, above the 5, 10-day moving average. But that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. You don't want materialistic change, especially on days uh, that the market is lacking of market participants. And that's exactly what you saw on Friday. So now that we know what happened, right? Now we know what happened for the last couple of days. Now we are concentrating of what we need to see for higher prices and what we need to see and just at least be prepared for it just in case the market doesn't do so. So we're always protected on both sides of the channel and we're always protected to, the, to both the top uh, and the bottom so we are not uh, caught with our pants below our ankles. So let's talk about the levels right here, right? So this is the last hurdle, okay? This is gonna be the last hurdle for the Qs until we start attacking the CPI highs, right? If you notice here, the high here on 11.16 was 289.48, right? The high here, right? The high here on uh, the 23rd, or only two days ago, was 29.46. So you get it, right? Again, stocks really rarely stop at random prices. The high here was 289.48. The high here is 249.46. So you guessed it. The bulls need to reclaim for, on the queues. If we can start reclaiming, you know, the 289.50, 289.80 level, you can see here, this is supply here uh, on the daily chart. If the queues can start building or, or at least have a close above 289.50, I think there's a shot here we start rallying to this 293 high from the CPI area. Because again, the whole theory, the whole point of the PS60 theory is stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So this is the last supply, right? Here's the last supply. And if we can get above this 289.50, 289.80 area above supply, then we should get to the next supply roughly around the 293 area. So very, very important. The one thing we do have to look for on the downside, just in case, right? Again, we have to be prepared for both sides of the market. Just in case we lose back the five day because the market reclaimed the five day to rally. So we know whoever has control of the five day is going to be super duper important. So we know 289.50 to the upside needs to be confirmed. And now we're watching that 285.79 level, which is the low from uh, two days ago that correlates both the five and the 10. So if we, if we got above the five and the 10, that's bullish. Well, giving up the five and the 10 would be bearish. So again, 289.50 to the upside and we have 285.79 to the downside. Any close above those levels are deemed to be bullish or bearish in that direction. So please uh, you know, be wary of those numbers and set alerts for them. Uh, for the SPYs, right? Beautiful breakout here uh, above this uh, two, uh, 397.80 level. Uh, it took out the CPI number, which is very, very important, uh, which is su super duper important. So what has to happen is, if you guys notice, the SPY stopped shy of 403 t twice back-to-back -back days. Everybody see that? Right, 402.93 was the high from Wednesday. Uh, 402.91 was the high from yesterday, from Friday. So the bulls need to reclaim 403 on the SPYs. And I think if that happens, we can get a move uh, into this 405 level, which is the 200-day moving average. Uh, same thing on the downside, we have to be wary. So if we close, if we give back this channel here, right? And this is how, how much, how bullish this market is, because now we, we are literally $5 away from the channel breakout from a couple of days ago, which is super duper bullish. So we have to, you know, be kind of acknowledge this area here. Somehow the bears, 
uh, kind of take over again, which again, you know, anything's possible. Uh, and they any close below 97.70 on the spies that deems to be bearish. So we got 403 to the upside, uh, 397.70s to the downside. Again, set alerts, be prepared. No trader should ever uh, ever come into the market less than 110% prepared or know their critical mass areas for organic movements in that direction. If you're doing so, you're trading half ass. Again, I've always maintained the idea. You don't need to be a full-time trader to put in the full-time effort. If you're not putting in the full-time effort, you're, you're winging it, okay? Uh, there, there's no room uh, for error in this business. You've gotta be 110% uh, you know, really technically proficient and understand what the probability of your side of the market uh, extending. If you're just coming in and you're, all you're doing is looking at the hot stock of the day, you're, you're way behind the eight ball. You're, you're not doing your job. You're, you, you're trying to, you're trying to wing it. You're trying to make yourself believe that you don't need to put in the full-time effort, even though you are a part-time trader. So again, always look at charts, always, uh, you know, always read news, always be aware of what's going on. You don't have to be a uh, fine line through, you know, through, a, uh, through a comb, uh, going through every single headline, but understand where the market is before the day starts. Again, the market doesn't start. Your 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 day doesn't start on Monday morning at 9.30. Your day starts on the weekend, putting in the works, looking at early charts and seeing how much room you have in next to the next measure potential, how much room you have until a potential back test happens. You have to be prepared. If you're not, you're gonna get eaten alive. And, I, and I've, I've witnessed that firsthand uh, for the first 10, 12 years of, of my career. Uh, I got, eventually I got very, very lazy. I felt, you know, I could just wake up at 9.30 in the morning uh, and my natural talent in 10, you know, 10, 12 years of, um, uh, of experience is gonna get me through the day. Maybe it could, maybe it couldn't, but I know I didn't optimize uh, the results. Now, almost 24 years later, I do this every single day religiously. I'm constantly looking at charts. I'm making sure that there's nothing that I'm looking at is going to surprise me. So I'm aware of both sides of the market. So if one of those channels decides to kind of about face and move into the opposite direction, I'm the least prepared for it. And again, uh, it's something that you have to carry through your whole investment career, your whole trading career. And if you don't, unfortunately, uh, the statistics show, show you're not gonna be uh, around a long time. So we kind of know our numbers on the Qs. We know our numbers on the SPIs. Uh, let's look at the Russell uh, really, really quickly. Uh, again, kind of a mirror image of the SPIs, a little bit, you know, a little bit more tighter. You're not gonna get the same amount of range. But you can see here a nice, you know, nice distribution here in the bottom of the range held. We close now two days in a row above the next supply zone. The key for the key for the IWM is start reclaiming this 186.50 back to the upside. And the key to the downside is watch this level that it reclaimed the five-day moving average, the 183.50s level back to the downside, or at least a shorter term uh, potential of a back test. So we're, we're definitely uh, we are definitely uh, ready. Uh, for the market on both sides of the, the coin. So let's talk talk about some individual stocks uh, that I'm definitely watching for this week. Microsoft, gorgeous, gorgeous breakout is sitting here above this channel here. Uh, any close now, any close uh, above Friday's high, this you know starts building above Friday's channel. You know, we could see this 250, 251 test. And if it starts gaining traction like the rest of the market, I think we could see a move upwards to the 253, 257 level. Again, contingent upon if the market uh, continues to push higher. You look at a name like NVIDIA, gorgeous, gorgeous breakout here at the bottom of the channel here. Again, reclaim the 510 day moving average and trade it all the way back up to the supply zone. Again, it's mirroring the NASDAQ pretty well. If it could start building upon Thursday's levels, I, I, I think there's a shot we get all the way back to the CPI high, highs of 170. It looks incredible. It's really, really good. Uh, a name like ISRG looks wonderful, right? It came out with really great earnings. Look how tight this distribution is. You're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? You got two weeks, two weeks plus worth of distribution. If it starts attacking the earnings highs, you have a next measure channel going all the way to 275. And hey, look at Boeing, right? Boeing was a beautiful, beautiful move. Friday, uh, this is literally the only stock that moved. <laughs> at least on my radar, uh, only stock that move on Friday finally got above the 7520. You can see here how many times it failed 7520. One, two, three, four, right? You have, four, you have a whole week of failing 7520. Friday, it finally got above the 7520, closed within a dollar of its CPI's high. Hey, this thing starts confirming the CPI's high. We did see some uh, 190 calls start coming in for short-term expiration. You can see here, that is uh, that is your measure potential on the daily chart as well. So that looks good as well. Tesla, you know, Tesla, you know, had a had a really really interesting move the last couple of days. Um, 
So Friday, or actually Wednesday, finally woke up, traded to the 10-day moving average, and that's where it got rejected on, um, on Friday's action. Uh, unusually, what we saw, considering the stock didn't sell off and kind of just sat there going through distribution for the day before, the interesting thing about what I saw on Tesla was it was very rare to see uh, any type of aggressive call or put buying on Friday because just there's nobody around. In, in the morning, they were coming for a lot of 180 weeklies with some with some size. Obviously, those contracts have been uh, expired, but I found it very, very odd that uh, Friday, of all things, uh, that was getting any institutional flow. You can see, you know, six, seven, you know, not seven, but six, six mid six uh, figure bets on Friday's expiration, which obviously expired uh, by now. But for, for Tesla to get going right now, I, I want to give it just because the, the market is strong and hell, I love Tesla. I, I want to see it get above this channel here. You see this whole channel here that started on November 17th, right? If it could just get above this channel here at 1117, I think there's a shot here we could get 9495 for the trade. But I wanna see, I'd like to see, especially Monday, I, I wanna see how it handles uh, is its first uh, its first dip uh, in the futures. I wanna see if they could trap shorts on the rising uh, 60 minute support. Uh, other than that, all the you know all the other channels look pretty much uh, pretty much uh, you know pretty much the same. We kind of digested the move from uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Obviously Thursday we were closed for Thanksgiving. And the most important part going into uh, you know Monday's session is let's see the indexes advance. If they can start advances on the numbers that we just uh, you know I just displayed, um, I think there's a shot we can continue this rally and maybe finally get that. Uh, Santa Claus rally there is uh, traditionally, but just remember nothing is set in stone. Uh, again, we're not trying to forecast what's going to happen two weeks from now or three months from now. All we're trying to do is take it day by day, trade by trade, and we're looking to switch based on technical confirmation the other way, not because we want it, right? Always remember, trade the market you have, not the market you want. So guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody stays well. Hope everybody had an incredible start to their holiday weekend. Remember, love yourself, right? You know, you love your family, you love your kids, but remember, it's only one you, right? Be a better friend to yourself. Do something nice for yourself. As much as we try to be the greatest father, husband, dog father, right? Uh, as possible, friend, it's all about us. Sometimes we need to treat us a little bit better as well. Guys, God bless, stay blessed, and God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take